Crack it up. In the bottom. Uh, Fly left base. You gonna go with me? Yeah, I'll go with you. We're probably gonna play. <laughs> Take Watch his hand, put it here like this, take his other hand, cross it, go into his seat like this. That stops him if he comes out. Watch it, are you going to fall? Yeah. Yeah. Wow, yo, you you, you, you yeah. fall? I know you do. You do. Come on, Y'all not going to walk. Why are the windows off? Boy, that, that'll come down. Channel 6. Channel 6 News right here, Cam. Yeah, those are the mirrors. Yeah, don't run right on the inside. Y'all. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's, uh, there's all your uh, gauges and everything. Put, put these. back to here and whenever he pulls his handle that thing will, will cock, cock back like that and this thing's got 600 pounds of air it's down it won't it ain't gonna go no it's there forever what's this okay, this is the sensor for the uh, dive for the dive up to slow him down. Okay, okay. He's will open up out yeah. that air down here. Right, yeah, on the side. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, Artie. You're on TV, Are you going to be like on TV? You like being in the cockpit, huh, Artie? <laughs> yeah. 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 And you be a G.I. Joe pilot, huh? <laughs> oh, yeah, y'all get that. Like, no TV. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. And who do we have here? And Sparky. And Sparky, all right. Sparky. <laughs> with a pencil. Okay. Sparky. Oh. Here's time you name in. Okay. Make some pencils, some book covers. Pair of pencils, bag it, put some pull holes for your mother. And don't forget my free literature. Help yourself, don't let the Get a pot holder. Never do a cookie on a tender. Good deal. Come on, blue. Hey, it looks nice, Jacob. Look. Take that cup. You put them on the refrigerator. Yeah, you put them on the refrigerator. Did you get your mama? Yeah. Can I hold her? What color does she like? Green and blue. Green and blue. All right. Did you get you a pencil for school? Did you get you a pen? There you go. Be sure to get you some book covers for your school book. So every time that you open your book, you can remember me. Here's some book covers, Jake. And what are we doing here? We're suiting them up? <clears throat> yeah, we're getting ready to go fight a fire. <laughs> All right. We're going to find out what it's like, how hot it is. Try the helmet on? Yeah, I did. Okay, here we go. <laughs> y'all are from Massachusetts, aren't y'all? Yes. I'm glad to see y'all here and can make it. Boy, All right. I'm so glad that y'all don't have to Oh, Amanda. It's heavy. Well, here's Amanda's balloon. <laughs> That's what we have to wear when we go in a fire. <laughs> And where are we now? We're inside the fire truck, right? Yes. We're inside, We're the, inside the, fire the fire truck. truck. Inside the cabin of the fire truck. We're going to go fight a fire. You're going to go fight a fire? <laughs> yeah. All right. You having a good time today? Yes, sir. That's we good. Are. All right. Okay. That should about do it. These fans blow out smoke, tear smoke, so we can see where the fire is at, so we can see where we're going. Where's our spare Scott air packs? Here we are. This is where we operate the truck with. Ah, see you. Right. <laughs>
close this, you hook up to the fire hydrant, right here. Okay, and then you start getting ready to start pumping. And then you see adjust your pump to whatever pressure you when you need it. Just turn it on, and this, this truck is, is made for, it's pretty simple, anybody can operate it. So, depending on what, what hose, one, two, three, the one here, here, marked. And your valves are marked, these are all valves, these are valves. But basically, once you hook up, you pull a hose, and you get water. There, what's this right here? Okay, that's for your gun up on top, they call that a deluge gun. Uh -huh. You see a big stream of water coming yeah. out? Okay, that's what that is. And what you do, you crank it up, you give it more pressure, more water, and it reaches further. But it's, that's that gun up on top. We call it a gun because it looks like a, it was a turret gun, but it is. So these are all the gauges. Each one of those outlets got pressure on them, and you, you adjust the pressure for how much water is going through it. As you can see, it's, it looks like it's complicated, but after you, you <laughs> practice, you can do it. Okay, that's you adjust your, your this one, this trucks have foam on them because we're aircraft and structural. In case there's a crash, we have to use foam with light water. So you adjust this to how much light water the percentage. It's a metering valve. You just, these, they all got their names on them. And you, the driver's side, two and a half rear discharge. That's the one in the back. You see this driver's side and there's a hose in the back. And you, and you pull that hose, you just open this, and you got water to it. How long does it take to hook that hose up? It'll take approximately about 40 seconds. Mm -hmm. Time you stop, try on because these are all half. They're not like the other one, you gotta keep screwing them, you just have to That's the, the advantage of these type of the hookups. Okay, that's, that's, you see them air tanks over there? Mm -hmm. Each one of the firemen's gotta carry one of these with them. And when they're sitting down here going to fire, they mm -hmm. put their Scott air packs on. That's what we call them Scott air packs. They're self-contained breathing apparatus. So they put them on? And they put them on there, and when they get off the truck, they've got them on there. So mm -hmm. it's easier for them to put it on there while they're riding, instead of mm -hmm. waiting, wasting time later.
for uh, the parachute and everything. You like that, Artie? Yeah. Pilot. He's got all the things he needs for survival in here. He's got, he's got a compass, he's got a knife, he's got a, he's got a, a little light here that a strobe light so the planes can find him. It's not on here, but he's got a strobe light in there. That way if he's out there at night in the water or somewhere, the light will be flashing and the planes can see him and they'll go find him. Yeah. That's, that's uh, different switches here. He can uh, select whether he's going to go and the other pilot goes with him or whether he's going to go by himself. He can select with his lever right here. It says rear only. The back one will go by himself only. So he puts it over here. And both of them are going to go. They only do this if they're going to crash. If they have problems with the airplane, then they're, gonna, they're not going to go down with the plane. They're going to get this ejection. The only time they're going to use it is when the airplane is fire or something happens, it's going to crash. Yeah, that way they won't, they won't go down with the plane. But they call it ejection seat. They try to steer away the plane where it'll crash, where there's, there's no houses or nothing. It'll be in the water or in the woods somewhere. That's what this is for. This is your oxygen. It's connected to the oxygen. You've got a mask on there, of course. This is our dummy. This is the one yeah, we practice. The one we we practice. put him inside the plane and practice picking him up. He weighs 150 pounds. He we got some straps here that you gotta. He has to lay the same thing as a person. See? So we practice picking him up out of the plane and putting him to the suction. So you pull this. Can you do this? Pull this this way. And that little lever there. That's too easy. It's a harness. Oh, this is called a hornet. Okay, let me put it back. And when you do that, this comes off. This is a seat pack. That acts for that 50 pounds for him. So we try not to you take it off. Not to take him off from there. You take him off from here. You guys make it something. You stick your thumb in there, and then you pull it back. Okay, you're going to pull it this way. Pull it apart. This way. Just like this, and you pull it apart. There you go. That's why it's made so your thumb will fit in there at night time. You don't have to see it, you can feel it. He's strapped back in there. He's, he's strapped in here. He's strapped in here in the seat. And if you got to say, if the plane is burning and it's on the ground and you want to go over there and save him, you got to take these things off. We need, hey, still on the And here is uh, your uh, jaws of life. You have uh, your cutters. You have different tips so you can put your jaws of life. Uh, it's used uh, basically for wrecks. You get uh, people out of wrecks uh, so they can get uh, further treatment at the hospital. You can use it on crashes uh, for lifting or for spreading. Uh, you can cut away different things to get any attendants that get, have to get in there to, for the patients. Uh, to attend to the patients, make sure they're breathing. Uh, you can cut away the, the, the channels on uh, your doors, and uh, you can pop your, your seats out. You can put uh, attachments and, and chains around the bumper and around the steering column to bring uh, uh, the steering wheel away from the patient. And you can break away the seat to spread the seat back so you can get in there and get the patient out and uh, getting baggage dumped and onto the hospital where they can get further treatment. Uh, you also have your spreaders here where you can, uh, that's what you use to, to pop the seat uh, away from the, the ang uh, channel of the door. Uh, basically when you uh, get in, most, a lot of times your doors are jammed. You can hit the, uh, right at the edge of the, the door frame and uh, make a gap in there and pop it in there and pop your lock out and spread your door out. You can also uh, cut the two channels in the front windshield, cut the back roof and lay the roof back. You can uh, do rescue from the top, from the back seat, or from the, the side doors. Uh, there's all different ways we can get into 
get the patient out. You also have a uh, rescue saw here. This uh, blade is made to cut metal. Uh, we try not to use it because when it crashes, uh, you have a lot of fuel uh, around. You don't want sparks, but if you have to, no other way, you have it here available. You can also need to cut away limbs or anything, anything else. You use it for ventilation also, ventilation purposes in buildings uh, to, uh, to uh, cut away uh, different things in, uh, in the buildings to get in there. Ventilate. You rescue sometimes people are in there, you don't know. Uh, these are airbags. Uh, on a crash, you have an inverter aircraft, you can put them underneath the aircraft, uh, underneath the nose, lift up the nose of the aircraft, so you can get in there and uh, either break away the canopy, get the pilot out. It's also, it can be used in crack in uh, wrecks to lift up vehicles to be able to do the rescuing inside there. That's uh, basically what we have here. Anybody got any questions? We're going to get started here pretty quick with our show. We're waiting for the arrival of uh, Miss Gertrude Culver. Uh, she's our guest of honor today. While we're waiting for Miss Culver, if you'll kind of wander in here and find your seats. I'll tell you a little bit, bit about why we're here. First, I want to tell you how grateful I am that all of you came. This is a very important event for the fire department. This week is our week to say, hey, the fire department is here to serve you. We're here for your safety, and we're here to try to make your life a safer, more comfortable life. And with all the equipment that we have in our the, new equipment, this modern day range over here and uh, the likes, we're more apt to have fires in our home. So what we want to do is we want to take this week, which we have tried to do and, and put posters and everything and educate the people in home fire safety. While we're doing this, we don't want this to be a oh, um, drug out, boring lecture type situation. We want you to enjoy this. So this is the reason we're having this day to say, hey, learn something, enjoy yourself. We're glad you came. We have refreshments back here after it's over with. If you haven't already seen the, the um, thank you, the airplanes and our crash trucks and everything, please make yourself uh, at home and, and enjoy yourself. Some of the things that, that you'll want to walk around and see and, and some of the firefighters can explain to you this is, this is an arresting gear. Everybody that's seen Top Gun and see everybody land on the aircraft carrier and the airplanes that come to a great big screeching halt, this is, this is what we call an arresting gear. And this cable that's over here in the box, we didn't stretch it out because it's all greasy and we didn't want the kids to get all greasy and I'm sure you mamas appreciate that. But we left it in the box so you can see exactly what we're talking about when we talk about an arresting gear. We have them out here on the runway and we maintain them. That's part of our, our duties here at NAS Chase Field. So walk over here and see the arresting gear and see the tapes. Walk on out and see the T2 and the A4. Uh, they're all safety. Nobody can get hurt with them. Uh, be sure to take a firefighter with you. He'll be glad to show you and explain to you what all what all the aircraft is about. He'll even show you the resting gear hook and what all the little things hanging all over the airplane are. So please enjoy yourself while you're here. In the shade over there where you're sitting, you'll find our rescue equipment, which is the latest that money can buy for rescue out of aircraft and out of automobiles. Uh, our structural trucks, we're, we're a two-sided organization here. We have a structural side, which answers structural emergencies. Uh, if, if your house is on fire, then we'll answer your house fire. 
And if we have an aircraft accident out here, we'll a answer to the aircraft the latest in technology. So please be sure to see them. We'll see a demonstration by our, our uh, P-19 and MB-1 air, uh, fire crash rescue apparatus at the end of the uh, demonstration today. What we're going to do, we're going we're gonna to show you some home fire safety tips today. And Cookie McDaniels, our fire inspector, is going to let the kids put out some fires over here and earn your fire safety patrol badge. We have badges and everything to be well organized uh, right over here after this is over with. There's refreshments back here. There's handouts if you missed out. The front table up there, there's plenty of handouts for everybody to take something of a memento home with them besides the knowledge. Besides the knowledge that we're gonna impart you. The only thing we can't do anything about is this I'm so proud you're here. I'm right proud to be here. Right proud. Are you going to teach us some fire safety today? I'm going to try. I show you what it. not to do. Okay. Please come over here oh, and make yourself wow. at home in our kitchen. We've got oh, the latest wow. and greatest in technology here. Uh, first off, this here, when I start cooking, they start going. They go off just like that. My cooking is is that good? Oh my. So it's either burned or raw, is that what you're that's saying? That's it, that's <laughs> it. Cremated is more like it. <laughs> we got everybody, we, everybody here has one of these in their house, don't they? Yes, everybody has one. Don't stay home without one. And check it. If it's a battery operated one, be sure you check it once a month. Most of them have buttons nowadays, and you mash it, make sure it works once a month. Miss Culver, what are you going to make for us today? Well, I don't know. I'm going to see if I can't set my stove on fire here. Maybe try to put it out with the wrong stuff. Just remember, always use baking soda or cover it. Use a lid. Don't leave, you know, if you use flour, you're liable to have an explosion. Cookie. So we're frying chicken. We're moving right along here, we're frying chicken. chicken. Yeah, okay. We're going to try to. I think the chicken's going to be raw today. It looks like it's going to be raw. <laughs> I can't get it started. Get some gas. Where's the, what's this? That's gas. Okay. We'll have a little more to it here. See what we can do here. Cooking grease. That ought to do. That ought to do. Now we'll get it. Oh, my goodness, Miss Cover, you got a, a, a stove fire. Yeah, yeah. What are you going to do? Yeah. How are you going to get that out? Uh, you remember I said flour? Yeah, flour. flour. Throw the flour on. Yeah. That, that doesn't work. Do. No, that That's doesn't work. That's not a very good thing to do, Miss Cover. Don't, don't do that It's going to go like Right. Let's try something different. What are you going to try, try some now? Soda. Some baking soda. Baking soda? Baking soda. Does everybody have baking soda in their house? They should have. Sure, probably do. Sure. Of course, this is kind of hard to go out. That looks pretty good there. And it's not, well, then you'd use a lid. 
If that don't go out, then what happens now? Use, Use a lid. lid. Well, shucks, why didn't you just pick it up and run with it? Oh, no. I'll pick it up and run with it. I spill it all over the place. That's Burn right. myself, That's too. Right. Well, well, you're not, a, you're not as dumb as you look. Oh, <laughs> I hope not. I hope not. But then there's always, yeah, you always got the handy dandy flamethrower around. You ever seen this work? Well, that'll probably blow it right out of the pan. Try that. See if oh, works. I don't know if this will or not. See if we can get it started again. No problem. Watch this. You, you got a good handy dandy flamethrower here. Hairspray. No, that's not going to work. That's not going to work. Mm -hmm. Don't get no. hurt, man. So we'll just uh, flamethrower. Well, what if you don't have a pan? I mean, a, a lid for your pan. You can cover it with another pan. A bigger pan. A bigger Very pan. Very good. Thank Get you. another pan and cover. Okay, I would never thought. No, of that. really. You use something different. Yeah, or you use a fire extinguisher. Good old handy dandy fire extinguisher. How That's do you use those one. things? We got them all well, over the place here, but I'm not sure how to use one. First off, it's hanging on the wall. Take it off the wall. Some of them have little pins in them. You pull it. Okay? And then you aim it at the fire and squeeze the trigger. Just like that. I Real think easy. Cookie's gonna, gonna have uh, some little pan fires over here for the children. Oh, that ought to be fun to put out. They're always fun. Play. So what we're doing here is we're, we're keeping small fires from turning into big right. fires, aren't we? Those little ones get into big ones. Now, I know that around the house, all the ladies have hairspray. And these here happens to be one of the finest and the greatest blow torches you ever want to see. Or flamethrower. You get one of these going, and it'll really go. Maybe not in this wind. Though. Not in this wind. You get out of the wind here. There's what? a hemocane coming, you know. Something like that. Somewhere out there. Oh, yeah, you could do a, what, some welding with that, couldn't you? You, ain't, you, need, you can't see the flames, but it's burning. You hear it. That's definitely a flamethrower. Hairspray, deodorant, things like that. Don't use them around flames, open flames. Be careful of them. Let me go inside there where maybe I can get into the shade where maybe you can see the flame a little bit off this flamethrower. This ought to be real good. These are the What So Gertrude, what, what you what saying? What are you laughing at, lady? <laughs> huh? <laughs> lady? She's just jealous. <laughs> she must be. She has to be. <laughs> So what you're saying, Miss Culver, is, is you really shouldn't smoke while you're using that hairspray. Right. right. Well, you see it? It is definitely a good flamethrower. Be careful with your hairspray. Your deodorant. Deodorant does the same thing. Like I tried to do out there with the flower. So it will explode on you. You can really cause yourself a lot of grief and a lot of problems by using flour. Baking soda. Keep baking soda handy. It's more than just a cook with in the sweet uh, refrigerator and the clean one. It'll extinguish the fire. Use it. Keep it handy. Watch out for these, though. They're dangerous. We can, uh, we can find something else from this, Mr. Culver. It, it, that's just laying around everywhere, every household. I know my wife's out here to play it in every room, in, in, including the kitchen. <laughs> in the kitchen? I'm telling you, she got it everywhere. Around the stove? So what that's we should do...
That's right. It gets warm, gets hot, it's liable to explode. And then it's a missile. Well, the ends will come off. So don't put it in the fire, That's huh? Right. No, no, no. It doesn't work with a darn in the fire. No. Well, so if a kid no. comes along and has hairspray, and then he comes along and picks up a lighter, we got a lethal situation. That's right. right. You definitely do. You got a good flamethrower right there. You just shouldn't use them as a flamethrower because it can be dangerous to you and to other people. You know, in baseball, they got a strike zone that's, that's right about from your knees to, to right about yeah. your chest, you know. And well, in the house, you got a strike zone, too. That's right. For children. For children. From about there to about there. Now, you know, we got some big kids running around, yeah, too. Yeah, well. I mean, there's some big ones, too. And you got to put things super high from, away from them, because I know. I got a couple of big kids. In fact, one of them's almost as tall as I am. Well, we and can't. And she's into everything. Well, we can't put them up quite that high, Miss Cole. <laughs> but we can. can try. We we can make an effort to That's keep right. the matches from small kids out of the home strike zone. That's right. Out which is all the way from the floor, the floor. all the way up. Up to at least chest. chest high. Yeah. And That's good advice. when you're cooking, don't leave your pots hanging out like this here. Turn them. Turn the handles back away. Why so, would you do that? So as the little kids can't reach up and get them and pull them over on. Them. Okay. We don't want the kids to get hurt. They'll scald themselves. Turn your handles back away. Turn them into the middle of the stove. Of course, the handles might get hot. If you're going to handle them, make sure you've got uh, hot pads or gloves or something like that to handle those handles with. In fact, just sitting out here, this is getting kind of warm. Well, when they tell me, my kids are always getting into the cookie jar and everything, so I put it up above the stove. That's a That's good idea. That's a wrong isn't it? place. Put, put the cookie jar down on the counter where the kids can get to it or on the table. But if I do that, there may not be any cookies for me when I want a well, cookie. That's a hazard. That's a hazard of being a parent. I didn't need any more anyway, did I? <laughs> no, 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 no. None of us do. None of us do. One word, one word. Up, yeah. So we don't want them crawling over That's the stove no. and getting the, their clothes catching no, on fire, right? You don't want anything up over the stove. Nothing that the kids can get to, or that they want to get to. No goodies. Move them away from the stove. Move all the goodies away from the stove. Just remember, the little ones, they like to climb. They'll get on that stove, and they'll catch fire. They're closed. Make sure that you move everything away from the stove, especially all the sweets and the treats. Keep it away from the stove. Put it on the table where the kids can get to it, but where they're not going to have to climb on the stove to get to it. Anything else, Chief? You're a beautiful woman. Oh, I don't know about that. I know I look like a mud finch and all that, but I can't help that. Well, listen, Miss Covert, I, I sure appreciate you helping us today. And because you were so nice to come out here and, and take your own time to teach us some of these fire tips and fire safety tips and everything that everybody can take back home and maybe make their home a little bit safer to live in, I want to present you with this Junior Firefighter Fire Patrol badge. Well, if I could just find a place to put it. Well, I, I thank you, Chief. Well, thank you. Let's have a hand for Miss Culver. Bye now. Bye. Teaching as much about fire safety, and a lot of you 
we're going to have a, one of our firefighters um, dress up in the suit and show you what we look like when we go to work. You know, we don't go to work in an office. We go to work when there's a fire somewhere. So we have to wear special stuff. And sometimes to children, it looks a little, little frightening. Almost looks like Darth Vader when we get all suited up and everything. So it's a great effort for us to teach the, the children not to be afraid of us as firefighters, even though we make a lot of noise and we look a little funny, we're there to do a job, save lives. So, you no, know, don't be afraid. Do you get a blanket and you have to run it any longer? Stop, drop, and roll. That's right. You don't get up and run. If you close, get on fire, you stop, drop, and roll. And smoke the fire. I'm sure when Boogie gets set up over here, uh, <laughs> he's, just, he's, just, he's just for Halloween already. I, I it's know too early. Like <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, it doesn't take this long to real fire. We get an emergency on the airfield, that bell sounds. We we can sound it or the tower people can sound it. And this alerts the guys down here to go get on that crash truck with the user park right where you're sitting and respond to the emergency. Oh, you mean you 
I'm not. Let it get big, pal. Get big, pal. Wow. 
Well, if you put that out, you're a good one. Put it out. Go get him. Ooh, did it. You sure did. Uh, there you go. Next, Batman. Hey, Batman. Second down, wait on it. Fire one, He's a good one. He hit it. Yeah, he's a good one. Okay, let's get it back a little bit more. Let that thing get a little bit bigger. Okay? <laughs> bigger for it. Let it get real big. I'll tell you when. We're dragging for lights, actually. Super. Let it get real big. Go get him. There you go. There you go. Your badge. <laughs> Next. Let's move the line. There you go. Okay, go get him. 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 Go get We're here with uh, one young young man that had just uh, experienced putting out a fire. I wanted to get a few words from him. Uh, your name is what, sir? Ryan Patillo. Ryan Patillo. And what does it feel like to put out that fire a little while ago? Well, it feels okay. To give you an idea of what to what to experience if uh, a real fire would happen at your house. Mm -hmm. Okay. Did you enjoy the program today? Mm -hmm. And did you learn a lot? That's good. And uh, <clears throat> did you get enough to eat and uh, donuts? And where's your badge? Oh, you put the badge down there. Okay, I was about to say because everybody got a badge when they put out the fire. But you put yours down below. Mm -hmm. Okay, you have a good day now, all right? Okay. Bye now. Bye. <laughs> okay, we're here with, when your name is what, sir? Jason. <laughs> Okay, you got a pretty big balloon there, don't you? It's real pretty blue. Uh, did you put out a fire today? No. You didn't put out a fire today? Just you didn't have here. a chance or you didn't, uh, you uh, just got here. thought you couldn't do it or what was the uh, deal? We just got here. Oh, okay. Okay, it's too bad because uh, they gave little, uh, little uh, badges up for everybody when they put out the fire. It's too bad you missed the uh, program. You have anything else to say to everybody? No. No? You, uh, what, how old are you? You're eight years old. All right. Well, there's some more cake and uh, donuts left over there. You can probably go and still enjoy yourself, okay? Bye now.